Hello, everybody! Yes, long time no see. My name is King Guy, and I am joined by the one and the only Shemp. Hey, what's up? <laughs> <laughs> We've been gone for like a month, and this is what you just come up hey, with. Hey, guys, a... what's going on? Hey, sup, hey what's sup. going on, guys? You guys want to chill? You guys want to go and get McDonald's? <laughs> <laughs> Why McDonald's? <laughs> <laughs> Why? It's next door. I'm just going to go walk over there. <laughs> I wish I had McDonald's next door. But anyways, uh, before we get started with the show, uh, we want to make a quick announcement about Wumpa Time. Are you guys ready? Canceled. Wumpa Time. Yeah. <laughs> I was about to make that joke. I was about to say Wumpa Time is dead. Uh, oh, bye, guys. <laughs> it would just end it. <laughs> bye, guys. And that's it. That's the podcast. Goodbye. Uh, no, Wumpa Time is not dead. So we took a break because... We had a, a lot going on in our lives um, mm -hmm. from moving to life, just kicking us in the gonads, you know, everything. just everything, <laughs> everything that's going on. Yeah, things have been crazy. So we're going to try to get back on track, back with the regular scheduled podcast. But we are going to be adjusting Wumpa time a little bit. So you guys normally would come and hear our takes about the latest gaming news. What we're doing is we're actually going to be dropping kind of the news aspect and just our gaming takes. So we want this podcast to be more evergreen. We don't want you guys just to listen in, hear the news, hear the news. And then if you guys go to listen to us a year later, the news is dead. But what we, we're still going to open up with quick news. We're still going to open up with a few quick news pieces just to get you up to date on some of the major events that have happened in the gaming world. But then we're going to dive right into our topic of discussion and this idea was actually brought by Shemp and I 100% agreed with it <gasps> yes uh, I, I noticed that a big thing is when people whenever I recommend the podcast to people at work um, I always have to specify you can listen to the most recent not the first one because they're like it, it's not a it's not a timeless podcast it's like in the moment and then gone so yeah. it's not something that you can just recommend to someone on a dime and they hey go listen to whatever episode like i i listen to a lot of podcasts and the one of the big drawing factors with those is that yes they talk about things in the moment but you listen to it for the people and it's mm. funny and that that's that's what I want with Wumpa Time. I, I just want it to be. I want you guys to listen to it before us, and then just listen to us talk about stupid garbage. You know, <laughs> <laughs> uh, what we talk about cyberpunk every day. I mean, what what's going on? <laughs> yeah, I mean, listen, uh, we could rebrand to the cyber cybercast. You know, the cybercast. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so uh, today we're gonna start with the quick news, and uh, actually, Shemp, I'm gonna drop a surprise bomb on you already on our first. Um, rebrand slightly rebranded when we get to the main piece of news because I want your gaming take on okay. <laughs> something before we get to the main news because there is something I got to talk to you about. So, all right, first things first. Um, E three is back. Um, uh -huh. I'm shocked that this is even happening to begin with. But uh, me too, because <laughs> we actually talked about this um a few podcasts ago where we thought that we heard that E three had been canceled in general, but it turns out that E three is back. Not in person, but Woo. it's back. It's back as an all digital event. So think of it as a summer game fest situation, but summer game yeah. fest is still going. Um, yeah, I, I don't, I don't, I don't really get it. I don't really understand. I know, I know why they're doing it. It's just to to make sure you're still relevant, but you know, still. It's like it feels like we're starting to get a competition of like, oh yeah, we're gonna have all these game releases in June. You got Sony doing their state of play. You got E3 doing their games, and then you got Summer Game Fest doing their games. It's like... I'm an E3 stan. Oh, yeah, well, I love <laughs> Summer Game Fest, bro. Don't even talk to me, man. <laughs> uh, that's... Yeah, it's it's rough. So, But uh, I am happy because here's the thing, though. E3 going all digital, if you've never been to E3, then there's no difference. There's absolutely no difference. The only difference is now there's no live show to go to. So if you didn't have enough money to ever go to E3 or the time or whatever, there's no difference. It's still just going to be a showing of games. So yeah, which, you uh, know, YouTube and Twitter do that for free. Yeah, and yeah. I, I can just do that any time of the day. <laughs> but also the nice thing though, is that uh, Nintendo is participating. Xbox is participating in a whole slew of other big companies like Capcom and a whole bunch Not uh, Sony, <laughs> not Sony and not Activision actually shockingly. But uh, we do know that Activision has some, has a relationship with Sony as well as Jeff Keighley 
because uh, I if I am if I remember correctly, Sony has an advertising deal with Activision for their games, and um, they always use Jeff Keighley for Crash Bandicoot stuff. So I don't know. I don't know uh, what's going to be going on. Uh, but yeah, E3 is back. Um, but you know what else is back too? Uh, what's that? Uh, the Twitch's r- stupidity. Yeah. Oh boy, I'm excited. <laughs> you want to take this one or no? <laughs> do you want- I mean, I, I mean, we're both kind of because uh, th- this doesn't make me feel better because you know I'm I don't know if you've seen on Twitter, but I'm actually gonna try streaming on Twitch on Tuesday because mm-hmm. Tuesdays are my stream days, and I have a lot of friends who use Twitch, and I'm like, all right, I'll give it a shot, and then you're coming out with me like, oh, did you know you could get banned for like uh, if someone doesn't like you? And I was like, I'm sorry, <laughs> what? <laughs> So yeah, I think what like what you told me if I have an abridged version is Twitch is setting this new ban program to where they can ban your account if if something bad happens off of the website. Like if like if me and you are streaming and we're both like, yeah, I kind of hate that guy. And then we go out in the parking lot and fight and then someone tells Twitch they're going to be like, they fought. OK, we'll ban both of them. <laughs> Like it's not your business. Like, I, yeah, I didn't do anything bad on the on the website. Right, right. So basically, if any drama that happens on Twitch and then it goes elsewhere, Twitch can now ban you because of said drama that happened off the site. And uh, the the preventative measures is supposed to be uh, criminal things like oh, if you get uh, assault, threats, et cetera, et cetera. Yeah, and. I get and, it, uh, but I, I, like, uh, you don't have to be like, like you're Twitch. You're not the police. Like, if if someone if someone like reports to Twitch, like, hey, there are multiple reports of this streamer, I don't know, kicking his dog, and he's done it on stream once, and all of his friends say he kicks his dog, and we don't think he deserves to be a partner. Yeah, that. But yeah, if sure. if like, if my rival content creators like yeah that shim guy sucks they're gonna be like really and then they ban me just because of word of mouth with no proof then that's right. gonna be kind of an issue yeah and the thing is that this becomes a slippery slope because we it becomes a really bad slippery slope because the fact of the matter is is that things can get forged things can be um things can be faked and people's entire careers can get flush down the toilet like for example um uh game grumps right you remember that situation oh yeah oh right? man that was that was a whole roller coaster of emotions yeah it was and people were just like sh- like you know there was all these great crazy claims and but what would have happened if this was a live streamer let's let's just switch the hat a little bit what would have happened if this exact situation happened to a live streamer and they went to twitch with it Oh, uh, so immediately, not, not no hesitation, just account gone. Uh, yeah, account delete. But imagine this being somebody that made their livelihood on Twitch. Like this is what they 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 went through the grind. They worked day and night, and they finally got to the point where they can make it livable, and not like making ninja levels of money, but making yeah ad- something, but making an adequate amount of money to be able to live off of it. Because like, the thing with the, uh, if I remember correctly, the thing with the Dan, the Dan Avedon situation was that someone, someone cried wolf on Twitter. Uh, Twitter accepted it. Uh, there were no backing except for a couple screenshots that I think were taken out of context. And uh, the the accuser actually said on Twitter that quote they did it for. Uh, internet points like legitimately did it for clout and it, after that it just dissolved away because the person yeah. admitted to lying whereas if this was on twitch and let's say ninja the uh, same thing happens to ninja and the it starts trending like it did with avadon then yeah. twitch is going to see it's trending ban him the next day hey it was fake oh well accounts banned it's gone whatever oopsies exactly um this is not good this is not good because no not at all <laughs> I get where their position is, but no, no, it's not good. And also, too, whatever happens off the site, like, I get it. If they're a terrorist group and they're promoting terrorism, yeah, yeah, sure, yeah, remove them. But I'm pretty sure Mr. Anime's channel is still on YouTube. Well, then there you go. <laughs> no, no, I, come on. I think that's a threshold, dude. Twitch, yeah, you need to chill out. Yeah, yeah seriously. It's, 
it's really bad. I'm not, I'm not fond of it because um, it can really spiral out of control. Now, Shemp, we're gonna move to our main topics, oh, but there's yeah. a there's a sub main <laughs> topic that you, I haven't told you about this because I remembered it right when we started, and I, oh, I want to know your wonderful, oh. de- deep thoughts Ooh. about <laughs> the best game of the year Balan Wonderworld please oh my god I, just, I, just, I played the I played the demo before both of us on on a uh, stream and it like I didn't get the I I applied for a, a code like a, a review code from Square Enix and I actually got rejected. <laughs> like oh the, really? The, stat, the status said rejected, and I was like sick. So <laughs> so that happened right and. Because the thing is, I had no expectations. I just know that the demo came out, and that was it. So I downloaded it on my PS5, because I was so excited to play it on my PS5, because it's Yuji Naka, <laughs> who is the creator of Sonic. Uh, no, no, it's not Yuji Naka. Is it Yuji Naka? Yeah, it's Yuji Naka. Mm-hmm. Um, he, he's creator of Sonic, and you know this is inspired by Knights, and it has the same vibe as Knights and all that stuff. And I was like, okay, cool. And I downloaded it, and within the first minute of me playing the game, I was like, oh, man, every button is jump. <laughs> That's awesome. <laughs> and then I ca- and then I kept playing and what made it funnier is that you know you have the you have the the power-ups and the yep. power-ups are like uh you have you can do 3 at a time. Right. But when every button is the one action some uh, some abilities don't allow you to jump so you just lose the ability to yeah. jump. <laughs> <laughs> so I was like, I'm stuck. I soft lock the game. <laughs> of course you'd break the game. Of course, Chip. Uh, yeah, of course. And then I and then I got to the ending of the demo and they did like the little uh the high school musical dance number with the farmer and I was like <laughs> You could I I don't know if someone clipped it, but there's a clip of me on stream going into the closet and staying in there for a little bit and then coming out and screaming and then the game ends and I was like cool I can't wait to never play that again (laughs) well me being the April fool of that day guess what I did oh I saw the clip of you smashing the PS5 controller I bought the game I bought it Oh, you poor thing what a waste of money (laughs) I spent $79.99 Canadian Plus thirteen oh. percent tax, which equates to ninety dollars and thirty nine cents. Take it for- back. <laughs> I, it's digital. It's digital. Take, take it back. <laughs> Please say psych, <laughs> dude. Oh, no. I'm gonna tell you something. It doesn't get better. It just gets worse. Uh, oh, I cannot wait for the game to go to nine dollars, and then I'll buy it. Oh, I dude. saw the, the Metacritic <laughs> score is like thirty three, and I got so excited. I was like, wow, that's higher than I thought. <laughs> Dude, okay, at one point, there's a scene where this woman is, like, swimming with a dolphin, and then uh, okay. all, it's, like, her pet and everything, and everything's going fine, but then, like, the darkness overwhelms her, and the dolphin, like, just sla- fish slaps her, and she just, like, falls to the bottom of the ocean, and the dolphin just stares at her with, like, red blood eyes, uh, uh, and I'm just... <laughs> And then, like, and then she's, like, crying in her hospital bed. Like, the shadow, the nightmare, the dolphin is surrounding her. And then the boss fight starts, and it's literally Disco Fish Elvis. And... (laughs) What what is happening? (laughs) What is happening? (laughs) I'm sitting there, I'm like, what? And I'm like, what's the story? And it's like, yes. The story is yes. I'm Uh, like, okay. Sure. I, I... I, I've already thought of a gag if I review this video or review this game. It's like, all right, so here are your controls. And I throw a controller at the wall and I'm like, all right, <laughs> <laughs> there's the jump button. <laughs> <laughs> that would so work. Oh, uh, oh gosh. I, well, I, well, um, I can see that Square Enix will not be funding <laughs> another game from that team. Ever. Um, because they said they had one chance, and this was their one chance. <laughs> Twenty, so... dude, dude, in Japan, do you know how many copies they sold in the first week? I remember it being like crazy low, but I don't remember. Uh, just, just make a guess. Throw a number. Was it like eight thousand? In a two, week, two thousand one hundred <laughs> <laughs> in Japan. That makes me like legitimately sad. I feel so bad for him. <laughs> Yeah, uh, two thousand one hundred. 
Uh, you know, you know what makes uh, it more insulting. I don't know if you heard about. I'm sure you heard about this, but when, when the vanilla game. There's a massive epilepsy, uh, like, a, like a seizure <laughs> yeah, trigger yeah. at the final boss, and there's no warning in the game. And uh, <laughs> someone posted on Twitter that they contacted Yuji Naka, and they were like, hey, uh, I played the demo, I got to the final boss, or I played the full game, I got to the final boss, there's no warning, this is a serious issue, this could affect a lot of people, I think you should delay the game or put a day one patch. And he responds with, did you like the game? <laughs> 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 so, so as you can see priorities and Square Enix was like alright day one patch uh, it's gonna fix this epilepsy uh, thing yada yada okay cool but I feel bad for the little Timmy who got a game from his grandma who lives out in the bayou and he has no internet and then he just has a seizure <laughs> oh so dark Oh, no, so- that's, that's what we think about like what happens to little Jimmy gets the game and he lives out in the country and he has no internet well what then Oh, oh, poor little Jimmy. Poor little oh, Jimmy. Well. Oh, oh, well. Oh, well, little Jimmy. <laughs> All right, let's get to the main topic of today. So, I have a lot of feelings about this. and Oh, me too. Yeah. Uh, me too, dude. <laughs> yeah. So, uh, actually, Shemp and I were both like, okay, we're going to make Wumpa Time more evergreen. So, we're both going to bring something that we want to talk about and our hot gaming takes. And then we said the same thing at the same time. So, um, um. Yeah, I guess we're, the, we're talking about the one topic today that you see in the title of this podcast, and that is the Last of Us remaster fiasco. Now, Shemp, because you said it first, I want you to take the lead on this one that first. All right, cool. So I'll be sure to let people... This is a remake, not a remaster. Mm-hmm. Like, they are not porting the remaster from the PS4 to the PS5. They are completely remaking the game for whatever reason. And right. uh, it's Sony has stated that they are focusing on only big titles, big, big titles. So right. I'm glad that they're remaking a retro game like The Last of Us because it has been <laughs> so long since that game has come out. Now, um, <laughs> the sad. I think I don't know if this was true, but uh, I think there's fear that Ben Studios is going to get absorbed into Naughty Dog and rebranded to Naughty Dog North. Mm-hmm. Uh, I I remember reading that, but I don't know if that's true. But um, I, I, I guess, you know, a big gaming take. I'm sick of it. Just <laughs> stop with the remakes. Stop with the remasters. Make something new. Mm. Don't remake The Last of Us. Right. <laughs> you have Sly Cooper. You have, <laughs> have Jack, Jack and, and Daxter. Daxter. You have Ape Escape. Mm -hmm. You have Twisted Metal. Mm -hmm. You technically have Siren. You have all these neat IPs that could... You did Medieval, and that was fun. Could you do something else, please? Maybe maybe anything else besides this? Yeah. So my take on this is I'm not necessarily like no more remakes. I'm saying, in my opinion, no more, I guess, unnecessary remakes, right? Like, okay. Yeah. Like, okay, hold on. So, Crash and Spyro have been gone. We're, uh, I default to Crash and Spyro because, you know, that's kind of the, uh, you know, the hot topics of the channel. Crash and Spyro have been gone for 20 plus years, right? Spyro technically was in Skylanders, but that's, that's yeah, kind we don't of... Yeah, that. Yeah, yeah, that's, that's <laughs> Skylanders, right? And, you know, Crash came back in Skylanders, too. We're talking about for the original trilogies. It's been almost 20 years, uh... Since the original trilogies had come out, the games that are revered as the best overall, right? So, mm-hmm. for those games to come back, that makes sense. And yeah, I feel like when we turn around, we're like, "Hey, let's remaster The Last of Us." Now, my opinion on this does not stem off of my opinions on The Last of Us Part Two. Um, The Last of Us Part One is still probably my favorite PS3 game. I, I didn't even think about that. That that's so that's so dumb. You have the first one and then you remaster the first one. You release the second one. You remake the first one. And yeah. <laughs> for the PS7, you remake the second <laughs> one. <laughs> you never continue the story. You just keep remaking the same game. Right. Like, oh, oh no, it's turning into Madden. Oh no, it's turning into FIFA. Oh no. Right. So and <sighs> And, and you mentioned something, too, which I do want to talk about as well, because there's another remake in the works, which is intriguing as well. But 
the fact is, is that remakes are supposed to be a heartbeat check to see is there still life in this, these titles? Is there still love or to get or and and or a cash grab? Um, yeah. An example of a cash grab would be, uh, which is a logical cash grab, is the Mass Effect remakes. We Everybody knows it's, there's still love for Mass Effect, but it has been a while since we've gotten it. And, you know, it's been in drama that came out. It wasn't great. And it's all three games compiled into one. It's a trilogy and they're going back and they're fixing and they're doing changes too. They are changing things. They're making adjustments, quality of life improvements, especially on the first game. They're going back. So it makes sense, right? Yeah. That all makes sense. What doesn't make sense is that the last of us has so much life in it. So much life. Why are we doing a life check with a remake? Well, and that's another thing is with this remake, they, I think it was confirmed that they also shot down the pitch for Days Gone 2, which was just, like, people argue, oh, it's open world Last of Us, which I guess you could call it whatever you want, but you have uh, Days Gone 2, because Days Gone did pretty well, yeah. uh, you know, not as well as everything else, but still well enough, and Ben Studios pitches Days Gone 2, and then Sony says, no, we want to absorb you into Naughty Dog to work on The Last of Us again because yeah. I guess they just didn't get enough of it the first time because I think I think the long rumor was that I think Ben Studios is working on another Uncharted game mm-hmm. um, I don't know if it was like another Nathan Drake game or if it was a different character but the long one was that it, it, the long rumor was that it was a, another Uncharted game and uh, I knowing Sony's because here's the thing I love PlayStation, growing up with PlayStation. Um, if if PlayStation did not have games that I love, like God of War, Spider-Man, Uncharted, I wouldn't be there. I, in fact, if I wasn't a Sony fan right now, seeing what Sony's doing, I would be leaning more towards Xbox because Xbox is doing everything right. They're fully uh, supporting backwards compatibility and preserving yep. the past. Mm-hmm. They're putting them all on, they're putting everything on the store that digitally if you can't find the old game physically and they're all right. still supporting the physical game game pass is still the the best deal in gaming and they're constantly adding stuff to it obviously it has its drawbacks like no exclusives but it's still uh the the, the console and the company are still doing everything right whereas sony is like we're not going to do backwards compatibility because we could just remake it again and yeah. they're going to buy it again that i mm-hmm. hate that business practice and sony's right. going really hard into that right so I think in the line of thinking, what I'm thinking is that what PlayStation is doing is I would, I would agree with you if they continue to do this. And the only reason why I slightly disagree with you in the, with that aspect, but what, but I do agree. Like I agree and disagree. And what I agree on, I agree with you. If this happens, if without the, reach of everybody everybody's screaming um if they continue doing this with everyone saying hey we don't like this and sony continues down that path in a few years they're still doing it then yeah i agree with you i'm hoping that from the backlash from this because there's a lot of people talking about this and there's a lot of squabble going on is that i'm just trying to find the wording for this there's so much squabbling going on right now. And I feel like Sony really, really, really needs to listen. They need to, because right now in terms of between PS five versus Xbox series X, in terms of the console, like desire and want right now, it's PlayStation five, right? That's the, at the moment, that's what I've been seeing. Whenever I talk to any of the, or talk before the pandemic, you know, shut us down again. When I was talking to the uh, EV game specialists and everyone, everyone was saying, the list for PS5 is like three times bigger than Xbox One or Xbox and Series X. That could be attributed to the success of the PS4 mainly. Right. Uh, not not PS3, not PS2, just the PS4. Right. Yeah, exactly. The PS4 did really well. So, but Xbox, if they play their cards right, if Xbox plays their cards right and they take this hibernation, because they've been in hibernation for a while now. They, they have, they've kind of, they've been focusing everything on game pass and they're still talking about game pass and they're still shoving it down everyone's throats, but they bought all these studios. 
They bought all these uh, IPs. They have all these things in their pockets. And if Xbox plays their cards right, they have a chance to pivot this entire console generation. They do have a chance. Now, PlayStation has obvious business practices that make no sense. A lot of it doesn't make sense. And it's frustrating, especially with the fact that why aren't we getting, um, like, like you mentioned earlier, um, we got The Last of Us being remastered and it's being done by Naughty Dog. That takes resources away from Naughty Dog. And whatever content, Exactly, yeah. And whatever new content that we're getting from Naughty Dog initially is going to be shifted down the line because they're working on The Last of Us 1 again. Now, this is coming from someone that loved the first Last of Us. And I think I have an idea as to why they're doing The Last of Us Part 1 again. I got a feeling that they're going to want to introduce Abby in Part 1. So they're gonna they want to retcon everything. Maybe and, not necessarily retcon. Maybe not necessarily retcon, but show Abby's side. Like keep the events of what happened on Ellie's side the same, or generally the same, or expand upon it. But then also add. Meanwhile, this was all happening. The, then we got Abby's point of view. Well, I think the general consensus is that no one cared about Abby, and if I remember correctly, right. in the second game, they did show all of what happened on Abby's side in the second game, spoilers, um, mm -hmm. and because it would just kind of seem redundant. Like, you play the second game, right. you learn about this new character, and it's like, oh, here's their entire backstory, and then you remake right. the first one, and you're like, remember that character's backstory? Here it is again, but yeah. longer, and yeah. you don't care. <laughs> right, so what they're trying to do is I feel like they want to expand on Abby's character, which actually was my biggest critique about the game, was that Abby just shows up, does something evil, and then we get uh, the backstory of her where it's actually like, no, she's not the bad guy, but it's expedited and sped up. So what I think they want to do is that they want to go back to part one and maybe add in um, Abby's point of view to make it a different game again. To make it a different game, but the same. And at the same token of time, I get what they're trying to do. I feel like it doesn't discount the first game, but like the first game was wonderfully paced. It was just long enough. It wasn't too long. It wasn't too short. It wasn't. It didn't require thousands of hours to get through. It didn't require any of that. It was just paced nicely and if we start putting in abby's point of view i feel like that pacing is now going to get long in the tooth my problem with this whole thing is that sony's getting really uh in their own head about this because when the mm -hmm. when the ps5 launched they announced that like they're they're kind of doing whatever they want and if you don't like yeah. it well that's too bad so sad because mm -hmm. the uh they dropped the whole uh, japanese menu system for japanese uh so P ps5 users were right in Japan, circle is select and X is back. It's been that way for decades, from the PS1 yeah. all the way to the PS4. Sony said with the PS5, they're keeping the American way for all territories because they said so. And all Japanese players were like, why? That doesn't make any sense. And they said, eh, oh, well. And they're, um, the Japan Studios, Sony's Japan Studios, it's it's like down to like, what, 10 people like yeah. they, that yeah. could be that could be the platforming team. They could make a new Ape Escape. They made Astro's Absolutely. Playroom. It was awesome. Absolutely. They they have this amazing uh, talent and they don't put it to use because they're mm -hmm. focused on stupid unnecessary things like remaking The Last of Us for whatever right. reason. Right. No. Exactly. You are one hundred percent right. And where they are excelling, like the next God of War, the next Horizon Zero Dawn, these games are going to be really big triple A titles. They, th and those are going to be important. Those are going to be key factors, and they're going to be probably very good and very hype. But the problem is, is that I feel like Sony's... I feel like Sony is an expert at selecting teams. As in, they can find... They get the talent. Whoever they have to be able to get the teams together is A+. plus Because they, can, they get the support. They get the teams. They are able to recruit the most talented people in the world to create these games and then head office starts mucking around with things and things start going a wall. Like I was talking to um, my friend Shoop a few months ago about an ape escape, like a reboot, a ape escape reboot on the PlayStation five 
using the dual sense. Yeah, because that would have been that would be like a really neat throwback because back mm. in the PS One, it, it said like required uh, dual shot controller. Exactly. So it'd be interesting to have that throwback where it's like requires dual sense, so you can right. use all the features about that. You have to feel the monkey's footsteps underground or something with the exactly. haptic feedback. Exactly. And I feel like that the hept- that using that as an aspect for uh, Ape Escape would absolutely be one hundred percent worth it and great. And it just seems like that they don't see that. Like we got, like we got Sly Cooper, which has such a dedicated fan base and still strong. Jack and Daxter, you got all of these titles that are doing really, really, really well. Still, like people are still talking about them. People still want them. Uh, like I remember when I did my first episode of Triple R, and I talked about Jack and Daxter when Limited Run Games ran the first uh, Jack and Daxter game for the Limited Run. They sold out like instantly. Sold yeah. out, and it's been, it's same with the collector's edition mm-hmm. uh, for all three. Eight, each Jack one, two, and three all got a collector's edition. Yeah, um, and that, that, that was neat. I, I wish they would do that with other games like Sly Cooper and stuff like that. Even even like Ape Escape, just for fun. Right. Um, but it, it's just it's just weird. Sony has these IPs, and yeah. they're just there. Like right. hey, like Astro's Playroom was full of like. Hey, remember this game? Ha, that's cool. Can I play it, please? No? Okay. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> and then also, so there, uh, be- before Demon Souls, right? Before Demon Souls, what was what was PlayStation's last remake before Demon Souls? Uh, medieval. Right, Medieval. Now, this is something that I pray that they're not doing. I am hoping that they are not using the project of Medieval as the measuring stick as to how people like remakes because here's the thing medieval was niche to begin with medieval yeah. in comparison uh, it was weird yeah it was weird to see that of all things come right. back first but but i was okay with it i was okay to see medieval come back it's like okay that's cool and i'm okay to see medieval come back and there's nothing wrong in that sense of the selection of medieval but to use medieval as the measuring stick, as the example, as the test to see if remakes are going to be a good thing, I don't think it was intelligent because according to data, the first game only sold like 2 million copies. Now, 2 million copies is still pretty good, but when you compare that to, again, the, the original PlayStation Classics, um, which was uh, Crash, Spyro, which was like 7 million, 5 million, 2 million is pretty short, and then the sequel sold only like a million or less. So... To turn around and say, okay, we're going to pick this really niche game series, remake it, and use that as the measuring stick for remakes. Well, I mean, the thing is, companies have been remaking games for years. Spy- right. uh, the Spyro and Crash remakes were huge, and that uh, mm-hmm. that that's what kick-started this bigger trend of remakes. But right. back on the original Xbox, they remade the original uh, Tony Hawk Pro Skater 1 and 2, and it was called Pro Skater 2X, and it was it was all the maps from that game on the Xbox, and it was like, whoa, look at the realistic lighting. It was just like a tech demo for the Xbox, but it was a remake of that one. Right. And then they remade it again digitally on the PS3. It was called Tony Hawk Remaster or Tony Hawk Pro Skater HD. And then right. um, they did all that stuff for like the the PSP. It had a remake of Medieval and Ape mm-hmm. Escape. Uh, right. They remade the P. And then uh, they did Parappa the Rappa. They remade it for the PSP. And then mm-hmm. there was Pat Upon. There was all kind. There's so many remakes. And then it only got trendy, quote unquote, when Crash came out because yeah. Activision did it cheap. They didn't think it was going to succeed, so they, they said Vicarious Visions. Here's the mesh, put it on there, and then ship it out. And then yeah. it sold exponentially well. Yeah, and, uh, and still other is. companies were yeah, and cause that's the thing. The price of the game still hasn't gone down because of that. Exactly. And other companies are like, I want in on that. So like, there's this trend of. Like, after that, we got the Return to Arkham on yep. PS4, where they ported the games to Unreal 4, and it, it was just, like, another remake. So, mm-hmm. all right. And then you have all the Kingdom Hearts, not remakes, but they're getting ported, which yep. are all just remasters. And that's I'm just looking at my shelf and looking at all the remakes. Shadow of the Colossus, that's another huge one that came yep. out. I don't know if yeah, that, was, that was another one. Was that, was that before or after Crash? That was... Uh... uh I'm trying to remember. Hold on. It was pretty early on, I thought. It was it was early. I'm trying to remember because I remember it was it was around the same time because I'm trying to think back. 
I, I think Shadow of the Colossus came out it was by blue point right blue point made yeah that one. blue point did it yeah yeah uh, which it was i mean it was a faithful remake um controls and all um, uh it came out <clears throat> uh well that oh uh oh wow 2018 well yeah that's way after crash i thought yeah. that was way sooner yeah 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 but yeah no no okay yeah right right, right. so crash came out the success of it was there and then um Shadow of the Colossus and then Medieval and again Shadow of the Colossus and Medieval they're using those as remakes but why are they not touching Sly Cooper especially with this whole uh, the Sly Cooper um, TV series which is in this limbo which I don't even know it's what's in going the, on it's in this massive development hell yeah I, I have no idea what's going on with that but you got Sly Cooper you got Jack and Daxter you got Ape Escape you got all these IPs that are just sitting there and rotting Parappa the Rapper um, and it's just that they PlayStation had these titles given to these lower, these smaller studios that didn't know what they were doing and just saying, okay, well, we saw the results of those games before and they're not doing great. But the thing is, is that there's all of these new people today, the talent today. I think I would argue that the talent that we have today is the most talented game developers of all time right now, because oh, now yeah, agreed. because now we're creating games that are just amazing they are just fantastic and i i don't understand why we're not utilizing these games and i'm okay if they were like hey sly cooper remake okay as long as that springboards the ip to get back into action right as long as it springboards the ip into action i'm okay with playing and paying for a remake but like you said and then i'm gonna quickly shift over to what you mentioned earlier as an example um, or not early, well, earlier before we started uh, talking or before we started recording. Sorry, uh, I'll get to it. Uh, I'll get it. Is that why I still don't get why we're not springboarding these other IPs back to normal? I don't understand why we're not doing that. And we're just I don't either letting them rot. That's all we're doing. But it wasn't just The Last of Us that was announced. It's actually fairly recent, too. Uh, what's the other remaster that you wanted to talk about? Oh, yeah, just randomly. Um, Sonic Colors remastered or um, whatever got leaked by a, a German a German dubbing studio mm-hmm. who they've done work for Sega before by doing uh, Team Sonic Racing and Sonic Forces. So it, it was credible to come from them. So um, Sonic Colors Ultimate whatever got leaked and my first reaction was like my first reaction was like oh neat and then it was like why because it was sonic colors but uh that aside sonic colors getting a remaster is not a remake mind you so people don't get this confused this is them taking the wii game Mm -hmm. changing the resolution and upgrading the textures a remake with the last of us is starting completely from scratch again and then making the game again so this is a remaster so Sonic Colors got re- is getting a, allegedly a remaster to PC, PS4, Xbox One, Switch, all that stuff. And I thought, okay, like, it's fine. It's one of those safe Sonic games. It's the only... It's one of the only 3D Sonic games that has, like, a really high Metacritic score. So that's probably why yeah. they did that, just because critics liked it. Um, so compare this to The Last of Us. It makes sense, because lo- uh, Colors came out in, like... 2010 2009 something like that right. on the Wii mm-hmm. not the PS3 the Wii and we are three console generations later and um yeah there there hasn't been a Sonic remaster since Sonic 2 on mobile right. <laughs> that was the last time we got something <laughs> uh, you see this confuses me too this confuses me too it's like Sonic Colors like I would almost say that I would have expected generations to get the yeah me too everyone would everyone want dude, legitimately everyone wants unleashed every every single person wants a Sonic unleashed uh remaster yeah or something along the lines of that like or at least do like what they did with the Mario 30 uh, 35th anniversary collection where they're like hey let's put the, let's put you know they could turn around and say hey let's do Son- Sonic Adventure one and two. Uh, Sonic Unleashed and uh, Sonic Colors, and we'll just mash those together and call it a day. And I don't understand why Colors. Now, is that saying that Colors is bad? Absolutely not. 
but why colors? It would be like if we turned around and were like, oh yeah, um, we're going to be remastering The Legend of Zelda Phantom Hourglass. Why? Huh. Uh, yeah, it, it's like, <laughs> yeah, why? Or like Link's Awakening. Link's Awakening was another why. I still don't understand why we did Link's Awakening and then the bigger why is why we charged a full price for it, but that's besides, the, I, that's, a, that's a rant I've had many times. Why did we get these? So, Again, and I want to clarify my statement because I know there's going to be a lot of people taking this out of context and running with it because my channel talks a lot about remakes and remasters and stuff. My stance on remakes and remasters is that a remake and a remaster should springboard life back into a game in a game series. A So the idea of them bringing back colors doesn't really make sense to me. It really doesn't. It doesn't makes sense and but like specifically why colors when there's other sonic games that i mean there's the obvious one that everyone's been talking about i know that you're not the biggest fan of sonic adventure but yeah there's the (laughs) the one that you know if you're listening to the audience there are so many people asking for a sonic adventure remake yeah that's what that's what i was thinking because i think what i think they're doing is that they're they're doing something cheap like remastering colors like it's one of the easiest things to do and then all like i think the i think the big project that's coming out is an adventure remake not a remaster because they ported uh they remastered adventure one for the ps3 and 360 right it was as bare bones as you could get and like (laughs) it wasn't just a port because you could go to the options and then go to like controller settings and it would the game had an in-game model of a dualshock 3 or an xbox 360 controller so like they (laughs) they updated things in the game but whenever you play it on the ps3 and 360 it's in its original four by three aspect ratio and then the background behind it is just blue lines and it's like (laughs) sick <laughs> and then you got, nice. and then you, and then you got uh, Adventure Two, which had more, uh, it had more effort put into its remaster because it is sixteen by nine, so the right. whole game is widescreen, uh, the whole game is sixty fps. They have the updated models and all that stuff. It's a remaster. It's neat, but people want a remake. the The big problem with the Adventure One and Two is that people remember it, but when they go back and play it, they realize it's not what they remembered because it doesn't control as good as they thought it did. <laughs> Right, right, and th- that's the thing is that if they were to remake it and be able to get the controls back to snappy and modern in the way that people remembered it, you know, I think that that would be something that a lot of people would really enjoy, and I think a lot of people would be really happy about that. But again, defaulting back, there's a list of Sonic games that I would have seen remastered, which was one and two, uh, Generations, then mm-hmm. probably Unleashed, and then Colors. Right. Yeah. Uh, priorities. Um, yeah. And it's, it's funny you mentioned generations because remember, uh, like a couple months ago when I showed you the uh, Sonic sales data and we were planning on doing a video on on that stuff and like yeah. looking at how well Sonic is selling. Yeah. Nowadays. So uh, during that time, it was like, oh, here are the Sega put out a report saying, oh, here are the top selling uh, Sega games throughout the year and the number one if i remember correctly was sonic generations right and that, that was on steam and that's mainly because there was a big sale where generations was a dollar so <laughs> like because every every person ever if they play generations they've played it already and mm-hmm. to have it go on sale for a dollar and then have that many people buy it to play mm-hmm. it and it be the number one Sega game of that year, yeah. kind of a big deal. Yeah, exactly. So they should have used that uh, data and statistics to turn around and make a modern, snappy port of Generations for today. And they they didn't. They turn around. They like, let's didn't. Do, they let's do colors. It's like, okay, why? And this is where I'm getting, I'm getting nervous about Sega because Sega just seems to be. Like, okay, I'm going to take this a little a bit out of context, and I thought it was funny. We were playing Quiplash the other day, and the question was, the question came up, and it was, name something that a hedgehog shouldn't be doing that quickly. Name something that Sonic the Hedgehog shouldn't be doing that quickly. And the one, the Quiplash, the two answers was showering, and the other one was releasing mediocre games. <laughs> and I died laughing on the second one, because... see. <laughs> it, it's it's funny you mentioned that because I was just about to say that um I think it was in 
20, 2020, Sega was the only publisher that year to release a consistent number of games throughout the year that was, had a Metacritic score of like 85 or higher. Because they released a lot of games, and yeah. all of them had so many good uh, critical scores. And someone retweeted it saying, it's because they didn't release a Sonic game. And I was like, oh my <laughs> god, that's so true and upsetting. <laughs> and it's it's something that I don't understand. I don't get it, what it is that they're doing wrong to make a good 3D Sonic game. I do. It's the team. Um, right. If you, I don't, I don't know if you were uh, part of the whole hype up for Sonic Forces, but when Sonic Forces teaser trailer was shown at the the big live stream that they had, which is a whole another can of worms. Um, yeah. The the beginning of it said from the team that brought you Sonic Generations and Sonic Colors because those are the ones that everyone remembers playing, and right. those are labeled as the good 3D Sonic games. Um, that was a lie because the team, <laughs> the name is the same. Yes, Sonic Team. That Sonic Team made those games. But the people behind the games was all like new. They were all new people that did not work on those games. Right. And um, the, the what they were doing is that, I told, I've said this on stream a lot, is that Forces was made off the Lost World engine. Um, which got rid of the boost from Generations. So hmm. they, they did the whole like can I copy your homework thing on Generations? <laughs> uh, so they tried to mimic what Generations did with Lost World gameplay, and it didn't work. So they just kind of said, you know what? Release it. And that's been the that's been the trend with the games. It's like, oh, whatever. Get, just sh- release it. <laughs> yeah, no. And I want to see Sonic do really well with a 3D Sonic game. I really, really do, because I feel like that there's so many great uh, potential... Um, but just so many potentials for a 3D Sonic game and for it to be good. And I don't understand. And it's not that they're bad either. It's just that there's problems with them. There's issues. Yeah. There's there's it's not Balan Wonderworld. No, 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 no. It's not that. But it's it's just it's so weird. It is so weird to see that Sonic being such an icon the way he is and how much he's mass produced and for the games to be falling short. Like Sonic is one of those few, like um, it's starting to enter like uh, Pokemon levels of like, okay, you got comics, you got games, you now got movies, you got TV shows, you got merch you, yeah. everywhere. You can go it's for everywhere. Sonic. Sonic is, you got toys. You got, <laughs> you got everything for Sonic. And yet the main medium that he's based off of, the original medium that he's based off of, which is gaming, is the one that's currently very lackluster in terms to the general public eye. I'm not saying this as if you're a Sonic fan and you love all Sonic games. That's great. But I can turn around and <laughs> good look. Good for you. Good. That's fine. And that's great. The thing is that if we look at it as an objective point of view from people looking at it from the outside in, people are seeing that for some reason the Sonic games are just not taking off as they used to. And again, remakes are meant to be both cash grabs and uh, to play off your nostalgia and to do a heartbeat check to see if there's any life. And doing Sonic Colors doesn't make sense. The Last of Us Part 2 doesn't, or Last of Us Part 1 remake doesn't make Mm -hmm. sense to me. Sonic Colors doesn't make sense. So it's getting to the point now where I actually want to bring back Remade, Rebooted, Retired, and actually talk about some of these games that are that might be being remade and why they should and or shouldn't. Uh, I have an upcoming episode for Banjo-Kazooie, right? That's a franchise we haven't seen in a long time. Let's talk about that. Uh, I'm also thinking about doing a Psychonauts episode because we're about to do, we're going to get Psychonauts 2 hopefully soon, right? Maybe a Psychonauts 1 remaster would be pretty cool as well. The These games that require some sort of a comeback, some sort of a backing for a comeback, right? That had been gone mm-hmm. for a while. And then it's like, okay, let's remind people, right? Let's make money off of the nostalgia of people saying, hey, I remember that game. And it's the game that I used to play. They pick it up, they play it, and they're like, wow, I'm hooked on this again. And then you release a new title, and then people go buy that new title. And it's it's rehooking old fans, and that's the point. So both, I'm not understanding, which is you know kind of like the title of everything is that there's so many, I don't want to say there's too many remakes, but I'm saying there's too many unnecessary remakes. I think that would be a good, 
I think that that would be a good statement because I still like remakes, but there's a lot of unnecessary remakes. There's a line. There's a line where you have to be like, maybe we shouldn't do this. Like yeah. when Activision released Modern Warfare Remastered and then they released Modern Warfare Remake. And <laughs> when people go to buy the game, they're like, can I get Modern Warfare? Which one? Uh, the second one. That's on 360. No, the new second one. Well, there's the first one. Yeah, I want the first one. You want the remaster first one? I want the new one. <laughs> yeah, it's like... That's true. That's very true. And that this is where we're getting into a bit of a fiasco when it comes to these remakes to the point where we're getting a lot of remakes that are just unnecessary. They're just they're really not necessary. These are for games that are already established or titles that don't really need a remake i can understand like like what they did for um the mario uh, 35th anniversary i remember complaining about that and i'm still not happy about it but i mean i wish that they lowered the price because it's three ports right yeah it's just ports like the it's, like the only thing you could argue that they did was that mario sunshine is widescreen but you can get that with dolphin so it's like yeah. not anything new and right, exactly. They upgraded like some HUD elements, but like who cares? Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, I agree. And I think that if they lowered the price to forty dollars, I think that that would have been a much better deal. And I also I didn't buy it based off of the stipulation and the fact that they wanted to put a limited release window on it, which I was not happy with. But I would see them being able to do like, okay, we're gonna put Sonic Adventure one and two on one cartridge, and then we're gonna do the same thing that we did, but with that's uh, we're gonna put Sonic Colors on there, Sonic Generations. And just make it ports for modern consoles, tweaked up a little bit, and then remake some of the more impactful Sonic games. And yeah. But a whole game dedicated to remaking colors that it doesn't sound like a, biz a, good, a smart business plan to me. Um, the Diamond and Pearl remakes, for example, that makes sense. The Diamond and Pearl remakes... That does make sense, and the way they're doing it is interesting as well. It's a different take. It's it's a different but same take from what other remakes are doing. I like what they're going to be doing. Well, I, at least from the outside looking in, I like what they're doing with the Diamond and Pearl remakes. I like the idea that they're going with. That makes sense. Yeah. But, but then you got all these other remakes that I don't get. Like, what's there's got to be? There, what's another remake that you can think of that's kind of gone that you saw and you're like, why? Um. God, the, the thing is, there's just so many remakes. Like I can't. I can't I'm trying to. I'm trying to remember all the recent ones that come out. I know I, I was that way with the uh, the Link's Awakening remake at sixty dollars. I was like, why? Um, <laughs> and there was The Last of Us. Um, but God, what was it? I cannot for the dude. That's the thing. There's just so many. I right. cannot keep track of them because they just keep releasing them. I don't. I I just still don't. I can't. I can't. Right. Or it's like, or it's like people that ask me that say, "Oh yeah, should we remake another Crash Bandicoot game?" No, no, you already no. remade the good ones. We remade, <laughs> we remade the Insane trilogy. We remade CTR, right? That's enough. Yeah, that's it. You know, Crash one, two, three. Then there's the new one. How about we just keep making new ones from here on out? You know? Yeah. No, that I exactly. I agree. Let's not start adding more to the remake central right people asking for the legend yeah. of spiral remake no 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 let's not do no, that no either. no please dear god no <laughs> let's, let's, let's not do that um uh, even the idea of like even the idea that concerns me like hey let's remake let's remake this let's remake that like the idea of remaking some of the legend of uh, the legend of zelda games it's like okay which ones which ones are you going to remake which ones are you going to do and some people are asking for remakes for ones that don't make sense. It's like, no, no, that doesn't make sense either. There's yeah. a whole number. There's a whole number of unnecessary remakes that are out. And you know what the thing is, is that I think that we need to. I want to see new content. I want to see. Yeah, that's all I've been saying. All I want is new stuff. Yeah, I want new. Give me new. Right. Uh, you know, I, I, we've been seeing a lot of remakes and sequels. Now, am I complaining about the sequels? No. I'm not no, completely... could be, it's still something new. It's still something new, but I... Do you know how long it's been since where I bought a game that wasn't a sequel, dove into it, and fell in love with the world? Do you know how long it's been? Wait, well, yeah, what was the last time that happened? I'm trying to think. So the recent playthroughs I've been playing on my casual time, I finished Assassin's Creed Valhalla. That's a sequel. Spider-Man Miles Morales. Sequel. Sequel. Um... 
Cra- obviously, Crash Bandicoot Four sequel. Well, could you could you argue that with like if I did the same thing? Like, I remember playing the first Spider Man on PS4. It was the same thing for me going going into the world and falling in love with it. But that's Spider Man. I I don't know if I should count that or not because it is well, a new game. Yeah, I, I think you could count that. I think the uh, Spider Man PS4 definitely you could count that because it's an entirely yeah it's it's a new. It's like it's weird. Uh, it's weird. It, it does. It does. It's because it's PlayStation's take on Spider Man, right? Uh, yeah. Go, you know, uh, that would be the same question as like between arguing God of God of War four and God of War three. I, I was just about to say that. Yeah, the God of War uh, soft reboot. It, can I jump into there? But no, because it's continues. It's continuing the story, so it's technically a sequel. It's technically a, it's it is technically a sequel. It's it's a we- you see that's weird as well. But what was the last game series that's relatively new that you saw and you're like, wow, and you just became event infest- infested? Invested. Invested. Yeah, infested. Uh, I get, like, I didn't beat it or get far. I guess Horizon, because my, my fiance played a lot of Horizon. I didn't play it, but she got really addicted to, uh, like, the world and everything. Yeah. But, um, I'm looking around, like, on my shelf, and all of it is, like, other remakes or sequels or something. I guess, well, no, that's a sequel. I was going to say Yakuza Like a Dragon, but that's Yakuza 7. That's right. the seventh game. I played Control, but I didn't get, like, invested. I was like, neat, and then I just kind of stopped playing. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so you see, and that, that's... That's my problem is that this is a problem that I'm seeing that we're having is that we're getting all these sequels for these awesome games. You know what's the one that I think is going to be one that I'm going to get super invested in that I'm hoping for is Kenna Bridge of Spirits. I think the the game that's coming up for oh, PlayStation Oh, yeah. Part- Isn't that the – wait, which game is that? That's the one – hold on. <laughs> That's the one made by a. Uh, uh, oh, the uh, one that's Labs. like a movie. Yeah, I yeah, think that yeah. I think that that's going to be one that I'm going to get invested in. But that's a new IP. It's like okay, you caught me and you hooked me on something new. And again, it's like okay, what are you excited for? Ratchet and Clank. That that's, that's a sequel. See, that's a sequel. That's a sequel. So I feel like that we're starting to have a problem where we are seeing. Oh, uh, I remembered one. I remembered one. Oh, one. Okay. Uh, Bucks next. <laughs> There I kinda, you go. I, yeah, I got bug snacks. There's one. I got one. <laughs> you got one. Okay, bug snacks. I, I enjoyed bug snacks. Didn't really get like deep into. I finished it. I was like, okay, that's cool, and I just kind of moved on. Uh, yeah. Personally, I'm trying to think though. Like, man, the last game that I played that I got super invested in the world to, like, brand new game, first one of its kind. I'm trying to think, man, and I'm drawing a big old blank. And I'm. And, uh, uh, and I can't. I, I can't remember. And, and I think that that is a testament to something. I think that's a testament to something that we're getting so much sequels and so many remakes. Where's the new content? Where's yeah, the? Just, yeah, that's the thing. They're just they're just stuck on remaking and continuing old stuff because yeah, they just they it's cheaper to do that. It's it's yeah, it's it's so expensive to start a new IP and hope it does well. Anthem, um, <laughs> and, <laughs> because that, that, stuff like that, like Anthem, they're 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 scared of exactly that. Right. Um, but if you play your cards right and don't rush it. You shouldn't have anything to worry about. If there's interest, there's interest. But it really depends on how you uh, get the final product out there. Right. There might be, like, there's Returnal. That's the the where you yeah, die. Yeah, I'm, the- interest- I'm interested in that. I want to play that. Yeah, I, I am interested in Returnal as well. I'm a- interested in Kenna. Um, all, all it comes down to is can... Can we get new fresh ideas for this generation? Because at the end of the PS4 generation, even at the start, uh, by the end of the PS4 generation or the last <clears throat> the last generation, we started to get into sequel and remake land, and we're still in sequel and remake land. I want to see, and I want to see new ideas be brought in. I want to see something new. I want to see something different. I want to see something. That is really good. And I'm not saying that remakes are bad or sequels are bad. I'm not saying that not even close. Yeah. But I, but the thing is, is that if I'm sitting down and I'm having a dinner <laughs> and there's too much of one thing, it might even be the best thing on the plate. But if there's too much of it, I want something new, right? Yeah. I want, I want something new. And the thing is, is that having something familiar, having something 
different but new, but you need something brand new. You need to try to play different games. And it's true because it's like I have all these games that I have sitting here and I'm like, these are all sequels and these are all re or remakes. And I think that this is something that we need to see now more nowadays. We need to see more of these really evergreen content. So and uh, I think that's going to be I think I think that um, yeah. I think that's going to be it for today, guys. Uh, uh, we hope that you enjoy the new format of being able to just sit down and talk about more, um, being a bit more evergreen, a little bit more of an open to topic and conversation. And I hope that you guys enjoyed it. If you guys uh, want to leave a comment, let us know what you think in the comment section below, what we can change. Um, make sure to follow us on Twitter at Canadian guy with the extra H and, uh, at Shep official. Don't forget to go subscribe to this channel for more Wampa time news and podcasts. And also, hey. and also don't forget to go subscribe to Shemp who also makes awesome content. Um, <gasps> make sure, yeah, make sure to leave us a rating on, uh, any of the podcasts, uh, services that you use that you're listening on, whether it be Spotify, whether it be, I always go to say audio jungle. It's never. I, I don't know why I think audio, audio jungle. Sh yeah, audio jungle. I don't. Bro, know. let's go. Let's go make our own podcast streaming service. I, I I'm down with audio jungle. <laughs> audio jungle. Uh, it, oh my gosh, I will get it one day. What is our home for all of our uh, SoundCloud? SoundCloud. Uh, we'll get it. Yes, I'll get there it. I promise. You go. I promise. Spotify, SoundCloud, YouTube itself. Uh, and yeah, thank you all so much for listening, and we'll see you guys next week. Bye. Bye.